My name is Nicholas Johnson. I'm 44 years old and I have lost 8.2 pounds in the last month. In August, I weighed 200 pounds on the dot. And this morning, the scale said 191.8 pounds. My plan is working. Here's what I'm doing. This last month, I actually just started the second half of my scheme to finally get back in shape as a middle-aged Gen Xer. So I actually started prepping for this at the beginning of the year back in January when I decided to get more intentional about going to the gym to put on some muscle that I don't really need for anything with the intent of making myself basically more inefficient moving around. I'm gonna use a car analogy. Let's say my typical commute is whatever, 20 minutes through traffic and I never actually get to drive that fast. We'll take two scenarios. In both scenarios, I have the same car Car, the most popular car the year I was born, the 1979 Chevy Impala. It's kind of lumbering and slow. Kind of like me. The car is my body in this analogy, if you're not following. And my car runs on fat, right? Well, it runs on food, but I've got these little red gas cans for reserve kind of strapped to the trunk. That's the fat. Whatever, the car runs on gas. In the analogy, gas is the fat. That's the point I'm making. In the first scenario, I just drive the car like it is, stock parts with the engine that came with the car. For me, the engine is all of my muscles. And for some reason, I keep putting gas in my car every morning on my way to work. And I have to keep filling up more and more gas cans and strapping them to the back of the car because I'm putting more gas in the car than I'm actually using to get to work. So that's gaining weight over time, right? In scenario number two, I take my car over to the Gas Monkey Garage for an engine swap. I have them put in something like a 460, 7.5 liter out of a Ford Galaxy. This thing is big and heavy, and importantly for the point I'm making, it burns a ton of gas, even at stoplights. It's just burning through fuel. See, the car is my body and the engine is my muscles. I want my engines to be bigger and totally inefficient for the job I'm doing so they burn a ton of gas even if I'm not doing anything, even if I'm just sitting at a stoplight. Sure, I could keep the stock engine and just take a longer route to work, but with a bigger engine, paying Gas Monkey Garage a bunch of money up front, I won't have to do nearly as much driving to get through all that extra gas that I have in the gas can strapped to the back. So over time, I can start to remove those from the back of the car. They look hideous. Anyway, that was my plan. I started hitting the gym consistently in January without changing anything about my diet. So my weight didn't really change. I'll bet my body composition, like muscles to fat ratio did to some extent, but I didn't track that. January was also when I started taking creatine daily, just three grams. I read so many articles and studies and watched so many personal trainers online talk about it and from what I can tell pretty much everyone should be taking that stuff my dad should be taking that stuff it's got way more uses than just like getting strong in the gym you do initially put on some extra weight because I guess it makes your muscles sort of absorb water into their cells muscles are mostly water anyway so this is not a bad thing it actually helps things move around in there it helps the acid the lactic acid get out of your muscles after a workout but you get to lift a little heavier and recover from that a little quicker than if you didn't take it and like a dozen other things with apparently almost no side effects a small number people get an upset stomach if you eat it without food and it'll give you a funny score on your kidney blood test. They actually test for creatinine, which is, I might be saying that wrong, which is the byproduct of breaking down creatine in your blood, which you now have more of, so it looks like your kidney just can't keep up with breaking down creatine in your blood. But my doctor says it's totally safe. As long as they know you're taking creatine, you can totally ignore that. So, months ago, I started putting on muscle. Just this last 40 days or so, I started tracking calories. I started using MyFitnessPal. I'm not promoting that app or anything, that's just what I'm using. You can use any calorie counting app to do this. But this one will talk to my Apple Watch, which tells it how many extra calories I'm burning by walking around throughout the day. And you can like use a camera to scan barcodes on stuff you eat, so it's super easy to log food. But anyways, the point is, it might surprise you some of the stuff that you eat has a ton of calories when it doesn't seem like it would. Like Starbucks, for instance. When we go work in New York, I travel a ton. I go work in New York a lot and we'll have Starbucks every morning. I would always grab one of those banana nut loaf things, so good, and then a mocha to go with it. And holy shit, that loaf has 420 calories by itself. And a grande mocha has 350 more calories. So I was basically starting every day with 800 calories that I didn't even consider breakfast yet. Or when I would go to Just Salad for lunch and have a California Cobb salad thinking I was being super healthy, if you actually break it down and look at the what's in the thing, when you count the ranch dressing, it's like 800 calories for that salad too. So you don't necessarily have to track everything forever, but if you just take like a few days in a row and run everything you eat through that app. I mean, maybe you're like me, maybe you're not, but unless I'm eating in a restaurant, there's like 10 things that I eat over and over. So it doesn't take very long just to have logged all 10 of those things and get a good picture of how many calories each meal you're eating is. Then I went over to a BMR calculator online and the numbers won't be perfect. Everyone's body's a little different, but it will be pretty close at least. You put in your height, weight, gender, and age, and it spits out like about how many calories you'll burn just 
being alive throughout the day. Like, if you stayed in bed for an entire day, just watched the whole series of Lost and only got up to pee and poop and eat, this is how many calories you burn. For me, being six feet tall, right now about 191 pounds, 44 years old, and a male, I burn about 1800 calories a day. And then most of those calculators will have a little chart next to it where you can see, well, if you're a little active, that's 2100. If you're moderately active, that's more like 2400. And if you're like an athlete, that'll be 3000 calories a day. So you can mash together these two pieces of data that you figured out. And what I found out was for the last pretty much year, I've been eating almost exactly the same number of calories that I've been burning, which makes sense because I've been about 200 pounds for at least a year. So all I've been doing is looking for little changes I can make to skew my diet into a deficit. I've those little eight ounce Mountain Dew cans instead of the full size ones. And I know cutting out soda altogether would be better and this would all go faster, but I think I would quit. Eating less bad food is still way better than not changing anything at all. So I found a couple of breakfasts that are easy to make and I really like. For one of them, I just started baking bacon and broccoli in the oven. I just put it all on a pan with one of those silicon cooking pads on it, mist the thing with peanut oil, and put it in a convection oven 400 degrees for 14 minutes. Then I make two hard boiled eggs to go with it while I wait, a little bit of salt and pepper. Mash those up and mix them with mayonnaise. It makes this delicious egg salad. It comes out to like 550 calories for breakfast. It's easy to make and I love it. The other one of those is just a chicken breast in a cast iron pan. Uh, put a little peanut oil in there, four and a half minutes per side to make sure you cook it all the way through. I also throw some broccoli in there. I just love broccoli and peanut oil. On that one, I forego the eggs because I'm not a monster. It's already like 50 grams of protein with the chicken breast. And even with a little Mountain Dew, it's still under 500 calories for breakfast, which leaves me like almost 2000 calories for the rest of the day. Then for the rest of the time, I just look at this app. As my food racks up throughout the day, I just make sure to keep it under 2400 calories in total. If I go out and have a cheeseburger and fries, I'll just eat a third of the fries and throw the rest of the way or give them to someone else. If we go out to eat and it's like pasta, I'll just get a to-go container right when the food comes, put half of it in there. Bim bam boom, Bob's your uncle. And I'm still full at the end. It turns out I never needed to finish a meal to be full. You just need to eat half of it and wait a little bit. So far for the last 40 days, I haven't felt like this is punishing or awful at all. It's kind of easy. Once in a while, I'll go like a little bit over the 2400, but then I'll just go out and take a walk for 45 minutes, listen to a podcast. Last night I went for a 45 minute walk and I listened to some podcast PJ Vote talking about turning shopping malls into apartment buildings or something. It's pretty interesting. And I know Apple Watch over reports your calories to some degree, but I burned something like 280 calories just walking around listening to a podcast. And that put me back into the deficit. I'm aiming for at least a 300 calorie deficit per day and sometimes way more. On days where I just have a protein shake for lunch and then something like a steak for dinner, I'll be like 800 calories under my baseline. That's just not like a daily meal for me. I don't wanna have a steak every day. That seems like it would come with its own host of problems. All this to say, just since the third week in August, I've already lost eight pounds just by learning some of the absurdly calorie dense things that I was eating normally and replacing those things with still tasty but less dense things. For instance, I love nuts. I love eating a pack of almonds and they make you full for a while. I love Doritos too, but I could just eat those continuously forever. That's bad if you're not following Doritos have a ton of calories. So the food thing and then continuing at the gym, putting on a little more meat all of the time, upgrading these old motors. They dancing? Yeah, they are. Oh, and I've kind of replaced having lunch. I used to go out for lunch every day, but turns out for me at least, if I have a pack of almonds, a Red Bull and a protein shake at lunchtime, I'm set till dinner. And those three things together are way less than going to five guys. Like you wouldn't believe it. So if you're a Gen Xer or whatever, if you're a millennial and you're approaching your forties or you're in your forties, we're fine. This isn't that hard. You just need a little information and then some effort. Go track what you eat, figure out what it is. You'll learn a lot. I'm going to be in the one eighties. Sure, high one eighties, but in like a week. I was 200 pounds last month. Count calories, stay in a deficit, eat protein, lift weights. How do people turn this into a whole book? That's literally all you have to do. Fucking A.